This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. this is this is the ramble and we'll be here until midnight tonight ladies and gentlemen from out california way it's the lovely strains and the musical stylings of larry bobbles brown good evening alex yes from the uh, wet cold dank dark west coast it is it is cold dark and dank Yes, of course, with this time change, you know, uh, we've been through this before, but I really hate it. Well, everybody hates it, and there have been attempts to... Many attempts, yes, and nothing ever gets done. But what they're talking about is making it daylight savings time all the time, as opposed to just regular time. And I don't know what the difference is. I mean, it's still relatively the same time. And we're not really doing an accurate summation of the time based upon the galaxy by suddenly saying we're going to move the clocks ahead. Right? Does that make sense? Let's just keep it like it is. What time is it right now? Here in New York, as we're doing this, it's five minutes past one o'clock. All right? Big deal. I don't want to... Wait wait, wait a minute. Yeah, we're we're on regular time now. Right. This it, is the real time, supposedly. Yeah. So just stick with that. You just know. stick with one so we don't have to change. And just, if you yeah. want to accommodate it at your jobs because you don't want people coming to work in the dark or something like that, it's a very Start simple... Start later. Exactly. When you get to this time of the year, say, everybody come in an hour later. ba You know. So Yeah, I, this... Uh, 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 the first week after they change the clocks, there's a 6% increase in auto crashes. Really? Yeah. That I did not know. Yeah. What, how about suicides? Are they up? I'll have to see, but there are a lot, just accidents in general, but car accidents go way up. Well, April is big suicide month. You know why? People are getting married. Uh- that's the reason. Oh, why. really? Yeah. Okay. No, no, I'm just kidding about it being. You know what April is, though? Um, who's the guy who was the former, Michael Baden, former, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, coroner for the city of New York. One day uh, I had uh, lunch with him and Al Goldstein and a bunch of other people. It was a Sunday kind of brunch that Al put together, and I was sitting next to Michael Baden. And he told me about April being what they refer to. You ready for this? Floaters month. Oh. <laughs> what happens yeah. is all the bodies that either die in the river or are uh, dumped in the river, okay, sink to the bottom because it's cold. When it gets warm, their bodies thaw out and the air or something in them works like a flotation device and the bodies start to rise to the surface and float on the on the river yeah <laughs> so it's it that's known as he he called it uh floaters month well he must have had some great stories uh, oh yeah yeah i was reading about the famous uh, la coroner thomas was it thomas naguchi naguchi mm-hmm Yes, he did Marilyn Monroe and a bunch of famous people. But he, I once read he he said of all the autopsies he did of heart of heart attacks, he said he cut these people open, and uh, you know what they ate that day? It was uh, uh, bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. Yeah. Wow, you know what I just had for lunch? <laughs> well, it was bacon, prosciutto, onions, mushrooms, and eggs and things but but well, basically you know that's what they would find if i died right now which, yeah, exactly. which is a distinct possibility you know <laughs> you 
You know, I yeah, the other night. The yeah, other, we get darker. I start thinking about death more and more. Yeah, sure. well, I you're you're consumed with death, right? You're worried about yes, it. Yes. You, you don't like the idea. No, you know? and I'm closer to it than you are. Although, who knows? You could walk out in the street today, get hit hit by a car, and you beat me to it. You know. Yeah. But um, uh, I got into this whole thing about I'm dead, and now they're going to bury me, and I've got claustrophobia. Well, of course, logically, how am I going to know that I'm in an enclosed space? But still, that thought terrifies me. I have the exact same thought, and I don't want to be in a box buried for sure. Well, my wife wants to wants to cremate me, and I don't know if I want that either. I think I'd like to be stuffed and put in a chair, you know? <laughs> really? I mean, seriously. Don't people go out and stuff their cats and stuff when they die? Yeah. You know? So let's do the same thing. Stuff me. Uh, get some. Make sure it's good stuffing, and then just put me in a chair somewhere in front of a TV set. That would be my usual place, or lying on the bed, you know. Uh, but uh, here's what happened the other day. Uh, you, you know, I've been going through this problem with this uh, apartment, you know, with the legal action against us forever. For, for, it's gone on eight and a half years. Okay. Longer than, as I told the judge when uh, when we finally uh, settled this thing, this has gone on longer than a murder trial. <laughs> it's the gone on what the uh, the the onion field. That yeah, was the I longest mean, trial I, I don't. <laughs> okay, so we settled our part of it, right? So we get to stay here, by the way. Uh, right. Yeah, but uh, we settled our part of it. They're still in court with the landlord against this guy. So I don't know how long the whole process is going to take but i i foresee they 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 could go for the rest of the week with a trial you know so uh, uh well, oh yeah so marjorie uh, and and uh i think even the landlord said this somebody said this said well this is the place you can live for the rest of your life and i'm going i'm going to die in this place right yeah <laughs> Now I'm not as fond of it, and I don't know why I fought for it, because I'm going to die in it. You know, every time I go past Mount Sinai Hospital taking a bus, up the, because it's easier to take the bus, because it's an express from da- uh, Midtown. And uh, every time I pass Mount Sinai, I, I point out to Marjorie, well, that's where we're going to die. Because it's the closest hospital, and we're Jewish. Uh, but it's the closest hospital. So when we, it, like one time Marjorie had a thing with her leg and we called an, uh, for an ambulance uh, we, uh, for help with an ambulance and whatever. And they came and where did they take her? Over to Mount Sinai because it's the closest hospital. So that's where we're going to die. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Well, I read about this. Uh, and, by the uh, way, folks, if you're listening, you're getting depressed, go away. Okay. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> There was a, in Nevada a few years ago, they found a, an Indian in a cave, and they thought, and he was perfectly preserved. They thought he'd been there like a few years. Turns out he'd been there like 2,000 years. So that's the way to die. Die in your home and uh, just be left alone. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you're going to commit suicide, you know, there was a, um, what was the name of the organization? The Hemlock Society, I think it was called. And they uh, were a organization who promoted suicide. In other words, they didn't tell people to commit suicide, but if you're going to commit it, here's how you should do it. And they wrote a book. A guy wrote a book on the on the whole process. Do you know the best way to commit suicide? No. Oh well, I'm I'm telling you now. So in case you're planning it, you yeah. Know. But you and I would never commit suicide because we're afraid of death. Exactly. You, you can't commit suicide and at the same time be afraid of death because you're going to, like, at the last moment, move the gun, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, but the best way to commit suicide is you find a mountain during winter and you climb as high as you can in it, and then you just sit there and freeze to death. Supposedly, that's the best way to die, is freezing to death. Well, I've heard that, and they said if you actually, if you take uh, maybe some pills and uh, Jack Daniels, that you go to this, after you start to freeze, and that, that's kind of uncomfortable, then you just go into this, like, amazing high, Yeah, and then you die. Yeah, it, 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 there's this high you go into, and it is good. 
And the one thing this book said is that if you're going to commit suicide, be responsible. Do not do it in a manner in which somebody has to come upon a disgustingly mutilated body. <laughs> and it's been said that when people shoot themselves in the head, you know, like at home and their wife isn't home yet, they really did it out of revenge because they're doing it in a way that's going to be very upsetting to that person when they come upon the body. Oh, yeah, I, that's a very big F you. Yeah, that's a, that's a fuck you. So when people commit suicide like that, I go, you know, where the body was found and everything, I said he was just hostile, you know. He just hated the human race and uh, whoever was going to go find that body. I mean, would you want to come home and find this? I mean, if he did took it to his head, his whole head is blown off. That would be horrific. But if you go to the top of a mountain and just freeze, nobody knows you're up there, you know, yeah. and you die. And when they find you, you're perfectly preserved. I mean, who was it? Uh, was it Mallory, I think? Who died up there on uh, Everest, the first guy to die on Everest? They finally found him, and his body was pretty much in good shape. It was just frozen. Yeah. You know? Uh, but they found it after all these years, which I think is very... I think, there's, uh, I think that whole area is littered with corpses that they've never brought down. People have died up it, on Everest. Yeah, Corpse Mountain. You know, there's no wind, there's no summer that comes along and everything melts, you know? Not that high, no. Not that high. But. Was there a, so the Hemlock Society, was that before Kevorkian? I think that was before Kevorkian. Uh, they were fighting for the right to commit suicide. Uh, and um, uh, I seem to remember them being called the Hemlock Society. Okay. Um, and uh, then uh, I'm trying to remember this book. What's the name of this book was? But it's it's very very good. Uh, and it I've read the whole thing. You know, and the various ways to commit suicide. If you're going to you know if you're going to hang yourself, here's how you should do it. Don't do it this way because you'll strangle longer. You know, do this because it'll break your de- neck immediately and you'll be dead. So it's a fun book, folks. If you ever get a chance, good read. I'm trying to remember what the name of it was, though. Um, but I'm I'm su- surprised you never read it. No, I never heard of it. Because this I've, is the kind of book for you, since your favorite like black book, box. Your book, your the, favorite book was the black box, which yeah. is all about the last recordings on on airplanes, the right. black box recordings and the trans. And what did you say? Almost every one of them ends with... They all end the same. Sound of impact. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a sound of impact if you're recording it? I guess. I'd, yeah, I'd like to see what it sounds well, like. Well, I'd like to know if the equipment fails first or the sound, the crash happens and then the, the, you know, the recorder stops. So I guess it would be sound of impact. I bet get... Guess there'd be enough for you to hear an impact. Yeah, those things must be uh, made incredibly strong to was to be able. To well, you know, you know the, the you know the old joke. Uh, if we want to save lives in plane crashes, <laughs> yeah. why don't we make the planes out of the same thing we make the black boxes out of? Yeah, there's like I remember like ten comics were doing that in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very common joke. Uh, yeah, but, it was, but it was a good one. It was a good one. Very good one. Uh, well, you know, we've all know we've all been touched by people we know that have committed suicide. Let's see here. Do who do we know that committed suicide? Oh, uh, Robin. Robin, of course. Uh, very famous suicide. I think that could have been prevented if somebody had intervened uh, into his mental state. You know that. Uh, well, the disease he had had done so much physical damage to his brain. I don't know. It just uh, what was the disease? Uh, Louis' body dementia. Louis' body dementia. Yes, it's. Uh, it sounds, it's, sounds like some kind of lotion you put on or something. Yeah, yeah. but uh, he had. Uh, I know his widow was trying to publicize this because I think oh he's just depressed and killed himself, but he. That can't be diagnosed till you die, Louis's body. And the doctors said that did the autopsy on him said it was the worst. He literally had holes in his brain. Really? Yeah. And I know somebody that was doing the last couple of weeks he was alive. He would text his kids like four hundred times a day. Sometimes the same things over and over. 
Hmm. Mm. And he was on a bike ride with a friend of mine, and uh, he said every every thirty seconds he kept asking, "What time is it? What time is it?" So he, he was just gone mentally. Wow, you know, um, is maybe that part of the genius that he had? Could be, but uh, this it, it, this dementia that he had, you, man, that sounds horrible. Uh, 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 yeah, Louis body dementia. Yeah, it's. I think it's L E W Y S. Louis Body B O D Y. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who else do we know Was that this? committed suicide? Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, there was a comic not well known, Ralph Eno, when I first started, and he he used he was he did these songs, kind of funny, kind of original, and he, then one night he just stopped performing. He kept showing up at the club but he wouldn't perform he was acting kind of weird and then he went out in the middle of the street one day and just set himself on fire set himself on fire yeah now if you're going to commit suicide that's the worst way if we just talked that's earlier worst, about right. going to the top of a mountain is the best way i guess being too hot is bad yeah that would not be i don't want to be on fire no i mean i wonder how long you must be in a great deal of pain for a while well the bad, bad thing was he lived like three days after that by the way, folks, if you're listening to this and you're getting depressed, go somewhere else. <laughs> uh, I l- let me see here. Who did I know? I knew somebody that committed suicide. I'm trying. We, to I know that we, there's more people we've known. I'm trying to think right now. Yeah, um, I I seem to think that there were a lot of other people I knew that uh, uh, that that had you know the committed suicide, but I can't remember now. Uh, of course, we have a lot of old friends that have died, and I'm, in the next show I'm going to talk to you about one of them, so don't get to him, but you knew him. But uh, the, a lot of people... There's hmm? certainly been a lot of famous people who have committed suicide. Like who? Uh, a lot of actors. Uh, Hood Gig Young, not, not a lot oh, of oh, 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 yes, yes. George Sanders. The best suicide yeah. ever. Yes, exactly. You probably know it better word for word than I do. But uh, he committed it. suicide, and basically his he wrote a note, you know, suicide note, and it simply read, "Life's gotten boring" or something to or, that I'm, effect. I'm so bored. I'm, <laughs> bo- I'm, I'm I'm bored. Yeah, he was just got so bored with life that he'd rather be dead, and I can kind of understand that. <laughs> you know, although he was not an old guy when he did it, you know. No, do you think if we, if we humans were able to live two or three hundred years, don't you think we would get we'd crazy with boredom? I don't know. You know, I am afraid of dying, but I'm afraid of living to be two hundred. You know, it's hard enough now at eighty, almost eighty-two. You know, the aches, the pains, the this, the that. You know, the little uh, prostate cancer here and the little um, uh, neuropathy there. And, you know, I can't imagine if you live to be 200, you're probably just like a little vegetable sitting there, you know. Now, if, if you could live to be 200 and still have your health, that would be terrific, you know. Think of if you could live to be 200, but your body was like that of a 17-year-old. Well, I think about all the things I'm going to miss when I die. Like, I was always into space travel. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, before there was such a thing as an astronaut. And uh, they used to call me Moon Rocks Bennett. Or, really? <laughs> or Moon Rock Schwarzman. Because I, I, just, I said, we're, we're going to get to the moon in our time. And, of course, we did it within 20 years after I said that, you know. Uh, so I once we got to the moon, I went, oh, good, we're going to go on to Mars, we're going to be in space, and then we just dropped, you know, we just dropped the, the, the ball on that one. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, we're planning on going to Mars, courtesy of Elon Musk. And that's terrific, but I'm not going to live to see it, or I might see, I, I probably, if, if I live the next two years, I'll see us get back to the moon again. You know. But, I mean... Uh, it, it, I, a lot of things I'd like to be around to see, and that's one of them. What I don't want to be around to see is the complete falling apart of the United States of America. I, I think this country is doomed. 
Just oh, I, I absolutely think we're doomed too. Or absolutely doomed with tech and everything. I think we we could easily be set up to a be a police state. Well, that uh, a lot of other things. I think this could turn out to be one of the most horrible places to live in the world. Okay, uh, and it's slowly getting there. You know. Uh, and and I don't watch the news every day, so it isn't what's making me come to this conclusion. It's just nothing's right, you know. There, there was something on the news, like uh, uh, on the internet, I saw about the three three countries you might want to go to when when the United States implodes. Do, do you remember what they were? Uh, one was uh, Serbia. Really? One was yeah. One was uh, believe it or not, Mexico. Yeah. And I forget the third one, but it was a uh, it was in Europe somewhere. Well, you know, China's pretty good, you know, but uh, you got to kind of be a citizen there to get any of the goodies. But you know, they uh, they have a very vibrant economy going now, and uh, they tr- uh, uh, employers treat their uh, their people excellently. I can say that for my wife because she works for them. Um. You know they they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be a happier country than we are and they they're gonna be a communist dictatorship okay because the <laughs> the current guy they have gets to now be the head of the country till I don't know two thousand thirty five or something like that you know so anyway hey listen uh, that's uh, we'll we'll call call it we over. touched we touched a lot of bases on this one a lot of them and I got some more for you next time. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry uh, Bowles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome. See, I'm a little out of sync. You know why I'm out of sync? Because I've got I've got Zoom opened up for these uh, people to come on here, and for some reason. Zoom causes this camera to freeze up. So so I'm out of sync. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that horrible? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it marvelous? Oh, boy. You know. But anyway. Uh, I guess maybe I should just go to them, although there are only a couple of them. Uh, let, me, uh, let, me, uh, let me go to them. Uh, what the hell? Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Oh, there, there we go. Wait a minute. I gotta. I got. I keep forgetting. I gotta do stuff here, like admit all. Here's. Uh, let's see here. Charlie Wallace is here. Good old Charlie Wallace. Uh, and uh, uh, Eddie Jordan. Hello, Eddie. We haven't seen you in a while. Well, let's see here. Charlie Wallace. Oh, wait a minute. Charlie, yeah. gotta turn your audio off. You gotta. Oh, my bad. Uh, Eddie Jordan. Huh? Hello, Eddie. We haven't seen you. Who's that? Was that you, Charlie? Yeah. Oh, okay. I kept getting kicked off of Zoom. I don't know what happened. Keep get, getting kicked off of Zoom? I got kicked off three mm. times. I had to log on four times. Yeah. I can't. You know what I can't figure out is this whole thing I've got with uh, with, with, uh, with my uh, uh, camera and stuff. Uh, being off, out of sync, my camera, if I have Zoom on or if I even have it going. Uh, so I can't figure that one out at all. Uh, but anyway, uh, hello, Eddie. How have you been, Eddie? Good. Yeah, you're where? Good. You're where again? I'm in Vallejo. Vallejo. So we have uh, uh, Charlie in Texas, and you in Vallejo, and nobody else calling. You know, this has happened two nights in a row, three nights in a row, and I am really considering. I hate to say this, I'm considering killing the show uh, because we're not not getting the kind of support that we should be getting. Uh, on this show from people and uh, I you know I mean I I, I I mean I would find some other things to do uh, with Gabnet but uh, this is uh, this is not working anymore I don't think in fact some guy wrote let me write let me uh, let me read you what somebody wrote uh, sent me on the, the uh, it was a comment uh, on YouTube uh, dude perhaps it's time to retire because this, this is just incredibly sad from what you once were in the 1970s in New York and again in the 80s in San Francisco. You were who I listened to, and it's out of respect for those times that I just can't watch this. 
Uh, hmm. Anybody agree with that? Well, I never, I never saw you in the seventies or eighties. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Um, Horace Schmidt. Who is Horace Schmidt? Or Horace shit? Horace shit. I think I better get rid of them before I even get going here. Let me see here. Horace shit. Uh, let me see here. We will. Uh, uh, oh, how do we get rid of them here? Hmm. That's. Uh, this is. Uh, let me see here. Boom, 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 boom. Come on. Come on. People can see me doing this. Let me see here. Uh, remove. Okay. Remove. Remove. Okay. We remove. We're going to remove him. We'll go ahead. Oh, Jesus. Now the whole thing froze up. There we go. See, now, and look what they do. They put the report right in the middle of the thing so that I, you know, submit. Okay. All right. All right. Done. See? That's another problem they've got. They should have all that stuff go over to the side instead of everybody having to see it. But anyway, um, you know, I mean, I got that note, and it was only making me feel worse than I already was from the last couple of nights' programs with nobody calling. But if it doesn't pick up next week, by the end of next week, I'm going to just, uh, that will be it for this show, at least. You know, I'll still keep the uh, the Monday show. It's a big one. Hmm? Yeah. And I'll keep the Monday show, which is a good show. Charlie calls that one. Jeff calls that one. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out what to do here, you know. But, I mean, I'll give it a week to see if it picks up. Uh, but right now, uh, we have, uh, you know, the best we can do is we got you guys, which is terrific. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Horace shit uh, is, you know, unless it's somebody I know and they didn't talk fast enough. Well, here, here he is. He's back again trying to get in. So let's give it another try and see if Horace shit is really an actual person. Uh, hello, Horace. Are you there? Turn on your audio, Horace. Hello, are you there, Horace? Yes. Okay, now we can't see you. By the way, that's an old moniker that I'd like to uh, disavow. I, I wanted to change my uh, login name to a different Yeah, uh, but where, where's your appellation, pic but, uh, Yeah. I don't know. Where's your picture? I, I wish I could tell you. I don't know. Well, uh, uh, where, where, do they, where, uh, where do you turn on the... Uh, over to the side, it says uh, st start video. Do you see that? Okay. The bottom, bottom left or bottom right? Or... Bottom, left. bottom left. Bottom left. I clicked sign in with uh, video and audio, but it uh, yeah. well, didn't happen. Now I'm getting launch media. Launch meeting on the screen. I don't know if I should click that again or what. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you've got some kind of problem. It could be. Do you have something covering your lens? Uh, let me check. Maybe I do. Yeah, I think I yeah that's it. There, <laughs> there we go. You know how I could tell? Because I, for a second, I could see a little bit of light at the bottom. And I figured, oh, so you have like one of those little things to prevent people from... Yeah, I've got a camera that I've tacked onto my monitor here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't have a built-in camera. What is, what, besides Horus shit, what should we call you? I was going to change it to uh, Hans Delbrook. What? Hans Delbrook. Oh, okay. You saw the movie Young Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. That's my favorite character because he wasn't there. He just only his brain was in a jar. <laughs> and, uh, until oh, the, uh, until the one that got dropped. dropped it on the floor at the uh, brain depository. And that's yeah. the end of Hans Delbrook. Yeah. <laughs> what, can we, do, do you want to give us your real name or not? Uh, I don't mind giving you my real name, but I'd rather hold off on that because it's the same as some of your other uh, people that you have on your podcast, and I don't want just to avoid confusion. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll just call you Horace. Right. I couldn't get that to change. I was going oh, to well, change here, it, here, uh, here, well, you see, here's here's what you can do. I can change it. Oh. People are going to see this going on here, but. Oh, hold on, that's hold that's on nice. a second. I don't want Brian logging on. Let me see. In and Rename. Saying, what does Horace? Shit what name mean? would you? What name would you like, Horace? Let's go with Hans. 
Hans? Hans or Hans Delbrook, either one. Fine. Hans. Let's just go yeah. with Hans or Hans. 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 Yeah, I'll there, we, Hans there we go. See there? I changed yeah. it for you. That way, if you forget my name, I'll just hold up my hands. And yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, I'll say Hans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you're calling from where, Hans? Uh, Deutschland. Deutschland? The country that spawned uh, both Adolf Hitler and the Trump family. So yeah. Nothing yeah. to be proud of. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, you've had a, a, a let's see here. Uh, uh, Angela Merkel is no longer president. No, she's out of there. She's out of there. But she was there for how long? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I've only been here a couple of years myself. Oh, okay. All right. But I think she was just out a few years ago. Do you know Charlie? She went I'm out thinking about it's like six, 16 years. months ago. I think it was September when they had the election. Well, she was there for 16 so years. Early October. I don't know how long she was Yeah, there. yeah. But she didn't run again. She just said that's I it. I think she, she was term limited. limited. She gave it up. They yeah. term limits are 16 years? Well, I think it was <laughs> something like that, yeah. She couldn't run again. Really? Oh, well, that's amazing. I couldn't tell you who took her place. I didn't pay that much attention. What? To what? Uh, obviously, you're an American, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so what? What, what, what made you go to Germany? I work for the government. Uh, oh, oh, I see. Army base here. Oh, I see. You're in the army. I was uh, way back when. But, oh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm a civilian employee. Yeah. Because yesterday was Veterans Day. And nobody thanked me for my service. <laughs> Thank you for your service, Alex. Yeah, well, you know. I've always we preferred thanked Jack thank last night. What? I've always preferred the thank you for your, for your sacrifice because I was being paid for my service when I was in the Army. But the sacrifice is, you know, the yeah. Army soldiers. Yeah, it was a big sacrifice for me. I was in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I realized that. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. I looked at every now at, at the uh, the people who I do the program where I serve the server that I have for this program every month sends me a list of countries where I'm being listened to and the second mm -hmm. highest country is Germany wow. about 15 percent of my listeners are in Germany now my question is is that you uh, I don't know if I'm 50 percent but I'm uh, I'm one I, I think you're I watch a lot of YouTube, and there's, there's, there's a little podcast. So you watch it on YouTube? Yeah. But, so, yeah, but okay. The problem because... is, I, I, I never watched it live before because mm -hmm. it's 5, 5.07 a.m. in yeah. the morning here. So yeah. It's a little difficult for me to get out of bed that early. Yeah, it's a little difficult at for me age. to see you getting out of bed that early. At my uh, age, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boy, I wish we had a few more people here. It'd be nice uh, if a few more people were to call. Yeah, this is this is getting this is getting very uh, very depressing, very depressing. Just to give you a little background, uh, I've been a fan of yours ever since Sirius at ten. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, I, I'd been a fan, a big fan of Howard Stern prior to that, and when he went to Sirius, I followed him there. Got a subscription or uh, subscription to Sirius. But I would listen to your show uh, with Christine and uh, your producer there uh, probably just about as much as I listened to Howard. Wow. But when they fired you, I wrote a nasty letter to Sirius and said, basically, fuck you, not, not in those exact words. And uh, I canceled my subscription. I haven't been back since. Did you really? So, That's so I interesting. Came for Howard. I came for Howard, but I left for uh, Alex. But you left because of me. Wow. Well, thank, thank you. That was very nice of you to do. Because when they took you off, they replaced you with some shit that I didn't have any interest in. Yeah. yeah. Plus, they pissed me off when they called this the arch conservatives on the channels they were on, the Patriot Channel. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I did six years in the military. I consider myself a patriot. But, uh, yeah. You know, I thought they were Well, I mean, it's one... It, people who are not Russian Limbaugh. Well, I mean, it, it, patriotism yeah. doesn't involve flag waving. Exactly. It's something that's in your heart, you mm -hmm. know? And and these people just do all the jingoistic crap saying, look, exactly. I'm a patriot. I have a flag. I'm waving it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I put a exactly. flag up in front of my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, what did you do to make your community better? You know? Exactly. That's patriotism. Mm -hmm. Right? 
Are you a patriot, Charlie? I like to think so. See, and Charlie, and and do you uh, do you uh, do you like all those right wing patriots? No. So you We're see, the jingoistic Uber patriots. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They call themselves patriots, but they want to end democracy. They want to have yeah, Donald yeah. Trump be dictator yeah. for life. To them, uh, fascism equates to patriotism. Yeah. Well. Uh, so, uh, so you you work you work for the government. What do you do? I mean, you just uh... I'm what they call in the profession a metrologist. A what? Metrologist, not to be confused with meteorologist. What is a metrologist? Uh, we do uh, calibration specialists. We work on all types of test equipment, uh, everything from multimeters to thermometers to. Uh, some really sophisticated stuff that the army used to test. And so did they, they actually system. sent you to Germany to do this? I volunteered for it because oh. they have, uh, <clears throat> uh, I think three sites in Germany now where they have calibration laboratories mm -hmm. on the army bases. So I'm at a small base, uh, I work on a small base here in uh, Bavaria, not far from the Czech border. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh. Which is good because uh, it's, uh, I can drive to Prague in about two hours from where I live. And uh, if you've never been to Prague, it's uh, beautiful. Uh, they say it's the Paris of uh, Well, Europe. Prague looks gorgeous. Looks yeah, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And yeah. it was the uh, it was the artistic center of that area too. A yeah, lot of yeah. artists mm -hmm. move there. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, the the Czech government. We're paying out large sums of money for artists to move to Prague, just so they would get a lot of art in Prague. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of Americans, a lot of American artists moved over there because they mm -hmm. got this. They got this check every month from the Czechoslovakian government just for sitting there and you know mm -hmm. painting some pictures. Mm -hmm. so. If you and Marjorie are still thinking of a place to vacate for a while, I would highly recommend Prague. I love it. I'm going back to really. Hmm. Gee, I'd have I have to think about that. Marjorie Marjorie has always said she won't move anywhere where there isn't a good hospital nearby. <laughs> yeah, important at our age. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they have good hospitals there. I, I didn't have any medical emergency to deal with. Anything. You know, our yeah. age it, it gets to the point where you go, you know, I <laughs> I gotta you yeah. know I gotta be near a hospital, yeah. uh, and I'm oh you know what you know what this is really depressing. Okay, mm -hmm. I just saw a thing. Let me see if I can find it here so I can quote it correctly. Uh, oh, Vernon's calling. Good for you, Vernon. Uh, but let me let me let me read this to you. Um, okay. uh, this is on an Apple site uh, that uh, does Apple News and so on. In the newest operating system, which isn't out yet, it, it'll be out shortly. It's just a revision of the current operating system. They mm -hmm. have a new thing you can do on your iPhone and you know what that is set a legacy contact <laughs> and a legacy contact is a person who you designate in event of your death <laughs> they will be supplied with a code number mm -hmm. and they go to the legacy thing and they put in the code number and then they get to download all your stuff off your phone in event of your death all right and you have well, to. What if they, I don't want my daughter downloading all those nude pictures. What? <laughs> oh well, I you know, what what they do though is they have to present Apple with a death certificate. Now, to me, if I were eighteen years old and had an iPhone, I don't think I would care about the legacy contact. Uh. <laughs> you know, but at my age, I'm thinking, hmm, who should be my legacy contact? You know, uh, you know, so. Hello, Vernon. Vernon? Oh, you can hear me. Just say something so I know you can hear me. I don't see you, Vernon. Hello. There, there he is. There he is. How's everything in Kentucky? Rainy. Oh, okay. It's been raining all day. Really? Uh, it was raining. We some up there in New York, too. We had rain up here in New York uh, this morning. There was a lot of it. Now, did Zach, did you send that up to us? 
I think there's some more coming your way too. Yeah, does it goes it goes comes from the south to the north, doesn't it? It doesn't. We never. Mm. It's not like it rains here and then we send you some of our rain. No, not usually. Not usually. Uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, boy, I, I uh, it was it was raining quite badly this morning, uh, and Marjorie had to get up and go somewhere. Oh yeah, she had, she she has all kinds of appointments, you know. And this was for her fingernails and a facial. And I said, well, thank God it isn't one of your doctors, because every other day she goes to a doctor of one sort or another. But uh, so I think, I think there might be something wrong with me, because I, I got the blood test yesterday, because my doctor wanted another blood test. And it turns out that I'm high in absolute... Lico, le, 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 I can't even remember the name of it. Lecocytes or something like that. Lymphocytes. Leucocytes. 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 Yeah, uh, I have a, a, an elevated uh, absolute lyco. Uh, what was it again? Leucocytes. 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 And one mm -hmm. other thing. And uh, I don't know. Is that dangerous? Oh, I think leukocytes are good for you. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm over. I'm on the high end. I have an excess of them or something. I believe your white blood cells are part of uh, disease. Yeah. yeah. Well, they yeah, say so that if it's low, if they're high, you may have some sort of non infection going on or something. Yeah, you might have an infection going on. I'm not a medical expert. A, a little infection of some sort. I don't yeah. know about. I'm not a medical expert. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. Sure. Well, what kind of infection could I have that I'm not feeling? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. It, uh, I don't have syphilis. That was one of the things they listed <laughs> in, online. I don't have syphilis, and I don't have you're leukemia. Not, I, I don't have any. Yeah, yeah, probably those things go up and down anyway, so I'm not oh, going yeah, to yeah, worry yeah. about it. But when I'll have my doctor, will see it, and then he'll send me to, like, some lymphocyte doctor or something, some <laughs> lymph doctor, you yeah. know. Uh, uh, anyway, so how's everything where you are, Eddie? What's what's happening in your neck of the woods? Anything? Well, since the last time I talked to you, probably like two years ago, I retired or right before COVID started. Oh, wow. Well, that was a good time to retire. Yeah, well, they, they laid us off at the refinery for right after we came back from Christmas break. And I said, fine, I'm not coming back. Are they lay you off at the refinery because of COVID or just laid you off at the refinery? Well, I was a, a contractor, so it was pretty standard. You get laid off like a dozen times a year. So, oh, well, they let you go, and then they bring you back and let you go. Yeah, and bring, bring you back, bring you back, send you send you to a different refinery, send you all over. Now, do contractors get paid better than other people, or do you get paid crappier than other people? Um, we were comparable with the uh, people that work for the refinery for mm -hmm. my job. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, then then COVID hit, and I guess nobody was going back to work, right? Um, got laid off December twenty sixth, mm -hmm. and right. I just start I started my paperwork and all that. I, I had a disability claim going with the VA, and that kicked in, and then I was able to get my. Uh, uh, Social Security started at, at 57. Oh, okay. At 57? How'd you get that yeah. at 57? With the, with the disability. A disability. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then since I had the Social Security disability, my union would pay my pension early, full pension at 57 instead of 62. Yeah. And is it a good a good pension? Yeah. I took a, I took a hit because uh, I wanted it to pay out until my wife died. So I took like a 50% hit on it. Oh, wow. Wow, but but she's uh, she's covered now. She's she's thirty four, so she's going to draw up for a long time, hopefully. Oh, okay, all right, good. And then, hundred percent VA. You know, I'm more the I'm I'm covered right now. What wow. VA, VA as well? Yeah. Wow. wow. That's so I got three checks coming in. No, that's good. I make, I make about the same as I was working. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that was a four year party. What, what, yeah, she 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 just walked in the door. She works in Napa. Uh, she prints labels for wine bottles. Oh, nice! Important work. Yeah, yeah because people take off those wine bottles and put them on their walls. You know? Yeah, 
she's an essential worker. So yeah, that's cool. And uh, Jeff is up in Connecticut. Everything it's been rainy today in Connecticut. I mean, right? well, I went uh, from Connecticut to Massachusetts. Oh, you're in Massachusetts oh, okay. now. And I'm in Massachusetts. This man because... is a world traveler. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. My and in the rain, it was yeah. terrible driving. Oh, by the way, I wanted to ask uh, uh, Hans what what uh, what how's things with COVID there in Germany now? Is it pretty? Is it pretty well cleared uh, well, up? Well, recently that they're on the rise, not as much as they are in Texas. Uh, Speak up a little bit. We couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think they're slightly on the rise infection rate, but I haven't read too much about oh, okay. it. Okay. Over here, everyone wears a damn mask. You know, they they pay attention to Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson when he says wear a fucking mask. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's a German version of that or not. Can't go into a grocery store or any other business without requiring they, they require you to wear a mask. By the way, I went and got my third shot. Right, I got it before I guess anybody else did. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. I but it hasn't shown up on my. On my Excelsior pass on my phone, it just says I have two, so I was worried about that. So I went up to finally went up to the to the to the drugstore where I had the shot, and they went online to the state, and I they have the third registered there, so. You know, I'm officially got three three time uh, 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 vaccine no. taker. Get mine tomorrow. You getting your third tomorrow? Yeah. Good. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I'm due for Vernon. my third, but I haven't got it yet. I've had my third. You've had your third. Okay. So I've had my third. So did I. How about you, Eddie? You got had your your vaccine? I had one Johnson and Johnson shot back in February or March. Yeah. They say that you can go get a second shot with any of the others if you've had the Johnson yeah. and Johnson. You should go get the get that too. Yeah, I got an email from the VA saying I could come in and get it done. And yeah. then I called them to schedule it, and they said, well, it's not you because you're not 65. Well, what so why did you send me the email? <laughs> <laughs> you told me to come in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because you're not 65, you can't get a second shot? Oh, that's not through right. them. Through, oh, through them. Oh, okay. Yeah, but just, You know what? Just go to the local grocery drugstore. They, yeah. Most of the pharmacies are getting And they're you know, free. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think I'll do that. Yeah, but I can get I can get any one I want now, right? With Johnson and Johnson, they say you don't they, Charlie. You know a lot about this. Um, I haven't heard too much. I've been mostly interested in the Moderna because that's the one I got last winter. So. Yeah, but they've said with Johnson and Johnson, you could get the Moderna or the Pfizer as your second right. shot and get another one, because yeah. they're finding that the Johnson and Johnson, while it does the job fairly well is not in the 90 percentile yeah. and that you can get it up there by putting by going out and getting the moderna so you know yeah that's all give me something to do this week yeah yeah, yeah. um so and that's true of pfizer also yeah oh uh, no well pfizer what do you mean what's true of pfizer if you have the um johnson and johnson yeah you can take you can get the pfizer you can get the Pfizer as a yeah, backup. As a backup. Yeah, as they a actually said you, it doesn't, you can mix them now. Before, they weren't saying you should mix them. But. Well, they, they, they suggest that if possible, don't mix them. Yeah. But you might go to a pharmacy and they, you go, okay, well, I want the Pfizer for my, I want my third shot of Pfizer, let's say. And they don't have any Pfizer in stock. Yeah. You can take the Moderna or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um I, I question a little bit Johnson and Johnson. They just don't seem to have have the efficacy that the others have. But they're all saying now, go get the third shot. About another couple of months, they're going to say time for a fourth. They're thinking of t asking you to go out and get a fourth shot. It's um, probably going to be like the flu shot, where you have to get one every year. Yeah, but this is like every six months. I'm, I got a suggestion. Why don't yeah. we get the Moderna or the Pfizer intravenously and mm -hmm. just have a drip yeah. going all the time? <laughs> and put it in your toothpaste like the fluorine. Yeah. All yeah. right. Now, now, let me ask you, let me, I got to ask you a question about our president. I was thinking when I was uh, 
But years ago, I went to a pet store. What does this have to do with the president? You'll find out. Uh, I, I went to a pet store and I was looking maybe to get a kitten, a new kitten. I had one cat already. I figured that cat needs to have company. So you get a okay. second cat, all right? So I we go to this pet store and there is this cute little Siamese cat and kitten and she's jumping out and up and down, up and down. Hey, you know, take me, take me, take me. So finally I'm just going... We'll take that one because she's got a lot of spirit going for her, right? And we put, bundle the cat up and take it home. And that was the last time that cat was interesting. <laughs> that cat, when we got it job. home, did nothing, right? <laughs> Just kind of laid around the house and you know made it tough on the other cat and uh, was not a uh, was not a team player, as it were. Okay. Uh, and uh, so the reason I say that is I kind of feel Biden's like that. You know, <laughs> when he was running for president, it's elect me, elect me, come on, come on. He had all this spirit and all this gumption and get up and go, and you're going, God, he's an old fart, but man, he's really got it going. And as soon as he became president, he became like that cat of mine. What happened? That's not the cat I bought, you know? Yeah. What? But he's better than no cat. Uh, well, I mean, look, you know, better than the cat we had yeah, four to, years to licking say, his ass. Well, <laughs> well, you say he's certainly he's better than Trump. Well, you know, the cat but that's not what this country <laughs> needs right now. We don't need better than Trump. We need different, and you know, we need somebody who's a little more decisive. I mean, a little, little, he just uses his, he should use his power to get what he wants. And he's not doing it. He's trying to be a nice guy. Yeah. You can't be a nice guy with Republicans. You kidding me? It's impossible. Well, speak, speaking of Trump uh, did you see where Steve Bannon was indicted on two counts? Oh, did, finally. He, did he finally get indicted for not that, for not showing that, that up? That came right? down. That came down today, and he's supposed to report on Monday to the court to be arraigned. Did Bannon get a, uh, a, a what do you call it? A pardon from the president? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but this doesn't. But the the pardon doesn't work for this, right? Because this is no, beyond it, that. No. Yeah. That was for that fraudulent time. fundraising for for building the wall, supposedly. That's what he was indicted on before, and Trump pardoned him for that. Wow. Well, nobody's there to pardon him now. No. Nope. Yeah. But they're saying he may thumb his nose at that anyway, even. The contempt of Congress thing, and they can't really force him to testify mm -hmm. because, and, and you know, so much he spends a year in jail. Big whoop for him. Yeah, Charlie. I was gonna say they could force him to, by doing inherent contempt, they could force him to testify, or else he'd be thrown in jail. This he's just going through the court, and he may end up, you know, with a prison sentence or something like that later. Could be years later. But it doesn't force him to testify. Yeah. With inherent contempt, he's in jail until he testifies. Oh, that really? Oh, so he is, did they pick him up and take him to jail? Yeah, but the Democrats won't do it. They won't They won't put him in jail? No, they won't do inherent contempt. They just did contempt of Congress, which is illegal, which means you got to go to trial and all that stuff. Okay, but he didn't get the, he didn't get the kind where you you got to stay in jail till you. No, show that's up. what Susan McDougal got or whatever yeah. her name was. Where she was that's what jail. I was about to say. I remember that. When she was in jail for like sixteen months, year and a half or something. Yeah, I lusted after her. Yeah, she was cute. Yeah, yeah, I interviewed her once, and I I was just a, oh. I, I thought she was, I I really liked her, you know, mm -hmm. she was terrific. But she was also hot. I'm, I'm, I, I, did, did, did Bill ever, was Bill ever accused of trying to tap that? <laughs> Not that I ever heard. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I, I'm just, I'm just questioning whether, because, I mean, if I were Bill, that, that's the one I would have yeah. gone after. You know. Um, anybody watch the Monica Lewinsky drama on, on yeah, FX? Yeah. It was actually very good. It, it was actually amazingly good. Uh, uh, it was produced by Monica Lewinsky. 
But she's as, a great interview now. I, I I've watched several interviews she, with her. Yeah. And she she comes across really well. She's very smart. She, yeah. She never was a dummy. What she was was a impressionable young kid. Okay. And she had the hots for the president. Yeah. You know, and, uh, uh, you know, I think she pursued him as much as he pursued her. All right. Uh, but, more so. Huh? More so. More so? I think she pursued him a lot more than he did her. Well, I think he was always very careful when he pursued people because, you know, he didn't want to come back and bite him in the ass. But now you've got, you're in your middle age, okay? You're hit, you've hit middle age. Now all of a sudden you've got this uh, uh, not unattractive girl, uh, certainly not as fat as the one who played her on television. The one that no. played her played her on television was a lump, you know. And Monica had a certain. I would have. I would have. I would have done it with Monica, you know. I mean, if if I had had the chance, because she uh, there was something about her. Yeah, she was a little overweight, but she wasn't fat. She was what we call zoftig, mm -hmm. or as some other people say, pleasingly plump, you know. And I thought she was very, you know, I, there was something about her that was, uh, did you feel the same way, Charlie? Yeah, I thought she was in a certain way sexy. Yeah. Yeah. She... yeah. I mean, I, some of these other women that he, he supposedly came on to were bedded down like Paula Jones. What yeah. a beast Paula Jones was, you know. Um, but um, who was it? There was somebody. This is this is a great story. Um, um, well, I'm, name some of the women. Jennifer Flowers. That's yeah. the name. Jennifer Flowers. Jennifer Which Flowers came and did my show in San Francisco, and I said to her, uh, she we were talking, whatever, and she said. Well, I really, I did have sex with the president. And I said, I'm not accusing you of not having any sex with the president. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a ridiculous thing to do. But I'm not, I'm not saying that it, it had to, you know, and that she didn't have sex with the president. She said, I had sex with the president and blah, blah, blah. And when I, I think this, her affair went on like over a period of 70 years. Yeah. All right. And I said, that's not the question I want to ask you. I believe you had sex with the president. I believe you had sex with him over a seven-year period. I don't doubt any of that. I have one question to ask you. Was he a gentleman? And she said, after each time, he would call me the next day and see if I was doing okay. And I said, I'll vote for him again based on that. <laughs> You know, because it wasn't a question of, did you have sex with him? But how did he treat you after he had sex with you? Was he a gentleman? Was he decent about you? He says, perfect gentleman. Even bought me gifts now and then. You know? Uh, uh, but their affair went on for seven years. And she didn't hate him for it. Mm -hmm. You know? She wasn't one of the women who was willing to testify against him. And his curved penis. You know? Remember that whole deal? Yeah. Yeah. How, can you identify his penis? Yes, it's unusual. Ben, bends to the left. Yeah, it bends yeah. to the left. It's called Pyrone's disease, by the way, if anybody wants yeah. to know what it's that is. Did she have to pick him out of a lineup? Yes, right. No, it, it bends to the left, right? Just like the president. Right. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where it got his politics. Yeah, yeah. But, um, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 that, that was my main consideration. I mean, was he a jerk about this? I don't think he treated, uh, I, I think he treated Monica kind of wrong in a way in that when he had to let her go because all the heat was coming down, he just dropped her like a, you know, a lead balloon. And no, he got her. He got her a job with Vernon Jordan. Well, Remember he went. That? She sent her to Vernon friend. Jordan, and Vernon Jordan got her a job at Revlon which yeah. she was about to start working at when the whole thing hit and she had to go testify before Congress and everything. And uh, Revlon didn't want that, you know. It, you probably wouldn't either because it brings too much publicity to your firm, you know. Um, 
But uh, it was it was rough for Monica. You know, she had to move to Europe for like ten years and work on an army base in Germany. No, uh, <laughs> she had to she had to she had to move to uh, she had to move to uh, Europe for like uh, ten years. And then she came back here and slowly did things like her TED talk. Do you ever see her TED talk? Um, and and it started getting a decent reputation as a very smart, educated woman. So whatever. And I don't think she ever got married. I think she's still a single. You know. You know, Mom, I'd like to interject. Uh, What'd you say? I'd like to interject a question. Yeah. Regarding these uh, all these celebrities and other folks who have mm-hmm. been going up on the rockets lately. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you call a person who goes into space an astronaut, what do you call a person who goes halfway into space? Halfway into space? <laughs> a half astronaut. Half astronaut. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really against space tourism. It, it so trivializes oh, space, you know? On that subject, I just read that one of the fellows who went up with Shatner uh, was killed in a plane crash. I think it was yesterday. Really? Somewhere in New Jersey, small plane crash, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Isn't mm-hmm. that ironic? Goes up mm-hmm. in that. Goes up in the rocket, and yeah. uh, a few weeks That's later, it was in a plane crash. You know? Yeah. Somewhere in New Jersey, I don't remember the exact location. Yeah, well, the trouble is that Shatner, when he took his trip up there, they only went up to the uh, the beginning of the uh, what do they call it? The stratosphere. Uh, uh, but there's a there's a uh, there's a, a line. It's called a certain line, and they have a name for well, it. Does it start with the, 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 the stratosphere? The stratosphere has five layers. There's the troposphere, which is what you see when you look out the window. The stratosphere, where the airplane. No, well, this is this is a this is, this is a line this, this is a line that they this is a line they've mentioned that mm-hmm. it's not you know we know what stratosphere is and so on what it the is Carmen the Carmen, Carmen line the Carmen line would you yeah. look it up yeah yeah the Carmen line and what the Carmen line is that place between where you start getting into outer space in other words there's no gravity. And they just went beyond that point so they could float around a little bit, and they came right back down. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna make a complete orbit. They, no, they, they, well, they, they, I don't think they even made an orbit. They actually went yeah, up, yeah. and no. then they well, came they down. Make an orbit. They went up and came down. Yeah, they how didn't, far did they? How far from where they launched did they land? They right they where they land, took off. Oh wait a minute! Oh. I think they landed in the they landed in the water. No, they landed on a, oh, they on, landed on the terra firma. The terra firma, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they got out and hugged on Bezos. Now, now the, uh, the the SpaceX rockets go up, and when they come back, when the at least the uh, uh, the secondary rockets come back, they actually come down right on the launch pad they took off from. You know that that's a big new thing because they can reuse those rockets over yeah. and over and over again. Um, but uh, I hope I'm, they don't launch any rockets from Texas in the future because they won't be able to abort a mission if anything goes wrong. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 because, oh. Because of the abortion laws, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you're too <laughs> subtle, you, Hans. You're too subtle for me. <laughs> Come on, I'm an old man. Well, I've been like, up all night. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a time lapse. There's a seven second delay between somebody telling a joke and me getting it these days. My brain's ready for the brain depository. I've been yeah. up all night. No, actually, all, all most a lot of the SpaceX rockets are taking off from uh, his own base in in Florida. They're yeah. building this giant. I love going on YouTube and looking at the Lay SpaceX stuff. They've got this giant rocket. I mean, it, it looks like something out of an old science fiction movie. The Falcon 9. <clears throat> the Falcon. Oh, it's huge. The Falcon Heavy, I think they call it. Yeah. Yeah. And it is huge. And that's the one they're going to send to the moon. Because they can land it, and then they can live in that thing. I mean, it's big enough that they have room to move around and, you know, I think a couple levels and things like that. You know, so I mean, uh, I think the stuff SpaceX is doing is incredible. It is just amazing. 
I think the latest batch of NASA astronauts went up on a SpaceX uh, crew capsule to the uh, International Space Station. Uh, they've been doing that. Uh, they've been doing that. I think they did that already on three occasions. And these guys are going to stay there for what six months, something like that. I think so. I guess they have to keep their rocket there. They're, they have to keep their capsule yeah. there. So right. I don't know. Can anybody else come up? Do they have other ports? They have more than one port that you can dock to. Oh, okay. So other people could come up and do it. The Russians could come up and yeah. dock their people. But I mean, what what's happened with SpaceX and that's so incredible is they've made space travel possible. I mean, they've made it easy. Um, yeah. I mean, they're they're just sending these people up there and they're doing just fine. They send them up in their pajamas practically. Have you seen those outfits they're wearing? Those outfits were designed by a guy who designed spacesuits for Hollywood movies. And uh, the, they are not functional in any way. There's not. It's not like oxygen is being pumped into them and they have air pressure in them or anything. They just, you know, function. Just, yeah. it's like wearing coveralls to work, you know. And the capsule has no controls. It's just like uh, chairs. Well, I do, no, I, no. The one that no does, dials or anything. no. The one that doesn't have controls is the uh, is the Bezos one. Bezos, okay. The one oh. with SpaceX, they definitely are flying that thing. Oh, they know? have a, yeah. like a pilot. Yeah, uh, I mean, it can be operated from the ground, but they prefer to do it themselves. You know, and they do it. I mean, it it uh, and they sent up. What was the last time they sent up four people at one time? It's like they were in a station wagon going to the sky, you know. It was really, it's wonderful. It's wonderful what they're doing. And it pisses me off because I'll never live to really see the promise of space travel, you know. Well, if William Shatner can go up, why not you? Well, basically because I don't want to take that rocket. That's not the one I want to be on. <laughs> I want to be on that first. I want to be on the dick rocket. I want to be on that first <laughs> rocket to Mars. You know, and they're coming up with one some one-way trip. One what? Way trip if you do. Well, they say it's a one-way trip. Not that people, not that people are going to die, uh, but it's a one-way trip. <coughs> Boy, a one-way trip because um, uh, the amount of time. If, if you go there, they just want you to stay there. Yeah. Okay, it's too much trouble getting you back. You know, and forth. It, it takes. I think um, uh, anybody here know uh, I'm familiar, pretty familiar with space travel. It mm -hmm. used to be they said it took two years to get to Mars. Yeah, but I don't think that's the length of time now, is it? I think they have these new. But that was two years to get there and come back. So I think I oh, think it's like seven months or eight months one way. Oh really? Okay, but then they're coming out with these new hydrogen engines or nuclear engines or something, which is supposed to. Yeah, if they can accelerate the whole way, they can do it in a lot less time. Yeah, and they could do that with a nuclear engine, right? Because the it, ion engine or whatever yeah, they call it. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's some pretty interesting stuff, you know. Uh, it, it's uh, it's good. So uh, uh, anything exciting happening down in Kentucky, Vernon? Oh, I don't know. Other than uh, the, the <coughs> usual stuff, we're coming up on the year end at uh, Habitat, so we'll have a few weeks off where we're not building houses over the Christmas holidays. Yeah. How often do you do that? How often do you go out and? I'm I'm with the electrical group, so we work on Tuesdays generally every week on Tuesday. So it's a fine oil machine. Like one guy comes in on Monday, another guy comes in to do the electric no, 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 on Tuesday. No, no, no. <laughs> well, they they try they try not to have different groups at the house at the same time, like so that you don't get in each other's way. Like you don't have the plumber there when the electricians are there. You don't yeah. have <clears throat> HVAC people there when the plumbing people are there. So they do try to stagger the schedule that way. So, so now explain explain how explain how this works with Habitat for the Humanities. You, you give people a home, but they have to pay for it, don't they? It is not free. But you, you also have to qualify first. You have to be within a guideline, one of which is you can't make more than a certain amount of money annually based on the size of your family. And you have to put in 400 hours 
of sweat equity in order to qualify. And uh, once you, you, you close on the house, you get a 20 year no interest loan okay. as a mortgage, which Habitat carries. They carry the mortgage itself. They that don't would... go through a bank or anything. Oh, okay. But let me ask you this. You're saying that they have to do sweat equity. What is that? They have to work with Habitat for the Humanities for 400 hours? Yes, but just, but the good thing is you can have family members or friends do some of that for you, and you get credit for it. And it doesn't have to be on just your house. It could be on a different house that's under construction for someone else. Right. But you get credit for that sweat equity that you that you participate in. How many? And the other thing they do. The other thing they do is. Uh, Usually you'll have a sponsor who will put up maybe $50,000 towards the house. A, a company will put up that money for the house, and they put a second lien against the house to cover that donation. So mm -hmm. after you, the, the homeowner has lived in the house for five years, on starting the sixth year, they will retire part of that second mortgage so that eventually if they stay in the house a certain amount of time, then they reap some of that equity that they build up in the house, but they don't get it for free. Wow, that, that's a terrific thing. It's just terrific. And and you you can't make more than a certain amount of money per year, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. What is it? What is that limit? Do you know? Well, I know I know this because I, I looked into it to see if my daughter would qualify. She's single, mm -hmm. and she made uh, she made two thousand dollars more annually. That would not qualify her for a house as a single person. And how much was that? Thirty-seven thousand. So, in other words, a thirty-five thousand is the cutoff point, or thirty-seven thousand? Okay. It was at that time. That was a couple of years ago when I checked on it. I don't know if they if they escalated based on inflation or what, but uh, yeah. she didn't qualify because she made too much money. And I said, "Well, honey, you could maybe quit your part-time job. Maybe you qualify." <laughs> Hans Hans raised his hand. Yes, Hans. Uh, th this is uh, nothing to do with what we were just talking about. But, uh, I know you're just a small boy when it happened, but do you have any memories of uh, World War II, what it was like uh, in America at that time? Vaguely. I was born in 1939. The war broke out in what? Uh, 40, 41. 41. 41. Uh, my only real memory of the war was the rationing or anything like that. Well, I I do remember there were ration coins. Mm -hmm. They were they weren't mm -hmm. even made out of metal. They were made out of like almost Computer. huh? Computer. I know you know, it was like cardboard. I I, I hardly <laughs> remember them now, but I I do remember the ration coins. Because I used to play with them. As a little kid, you want to play with anything, you know. Oh, really? Yo, here's some ration coins. I'll play with them. You know? but, them yeah, they kind of look. <laughs> they were. I, I. I. don't even know what they were made out of. But they. They. I, the closest mm -hmm. thing I could say to it was cardboard. But mm -hmm. anyway. And I do remember, once, a blackout, in San Francisco. Every now and then they would do a blackout to make sure that you could black everything out in case there yeah. was an enemy attack. Uh, and I remember a blackout. I remember looking out the window and there were no lights on out there. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That, that was I pretty mean, much my memory of the war. You my, know? my only link to World War II was my dad. He was with the uh, 4th Division on D-Day when they landed in uh, at Utah Beach. Wow. He fought his way into, uh, in his unit, fought, fought their way into uh, Cherbourg, I think, was the first port. And they, they routed the Nazis out of there. Well, he was lucky on D-Day because the Utah Beach was was not was nowhere near as well defended as, uh, as uh, Omaha Beach. So Omaha's the big there. one, right? That was the Utah big was one. The big, Utah was just the next one over to the to the west. I mean, there were three other beaches. The Americans were landed at Utah and Normandy. I think the Brits were at uh, Gold and uh, Juno. Sword. And the Sword Beach was, I think, uh, Canadians, or I might have some of those mixed up. But uh, yeah, he was wounded in uh, somewhere near St. Louis, uh, wound up a uh, bullet. He'd been shot in the side. But the bullet glanced off his uh, one of his ribs. 
broke the rib and it lodged near his spinal cord, so he carried that bullet for the rest of his life. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have any story like that. I was just living on Filbert <laughs> Street in San Francisco, looking out the window <laughs> at the at the blank void out there. Yeah. But boy, well, that, that you know, that, that, I just don't understand it, why wars even happen. I mean, what is it? You know, one day I was thinking about it and I was going, the worst part about wars aren't that people go over there and get killed. Once they get killed, it's all over for them. Yeah. It's the ones who survive who come back and have to live with that trauma. I can't yeah. imagine being on, say, Utah Beach and storming Utah Beach with the bullets all around you and people getting shot next to you and killed and so uh, on and you may be having to kill some people on the on the way his, up. Uh, his best friend he was in the hospital with got his head blown off. So uh, I, I can't imagine that. A what? In blown up? Got his head blown off. Oh boy. <clears throat> in combat. Yeah. My dad was lucky to survive it all. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying, but you come back from that. I mean, your father had to have some trauma from that. Oh, yeah, he did. He had a lot of nervous problems. And you know. He didn't want to be around him when he lost his temper, but uh, I attributed that to the hell he went through. In, yeah, well, in we, we didn't do much for those guys. We, we, we do more for them today than we used to do for them. Yeah. And yet there were a lot of people that came back from Vietnam yeah. who we didn't take care of. You know, who had PTSD in the worst way. Can you imagine, even for a moment, being in Vietnam during that war? I mean, what a hellish, hellish situation. Just the humidity alone is terrible. You know, but then the jungles and the, you know, the fact that your head could get blown off at any second. And you come back from that after, say, a two-year tour, and you've got to be, uh, you know, you've got to be a vegetable. And a lot I of had a friend of mine that went there, and he's, he's to this day he still has night terrors. Really? He wakes up screaming. Yeah. Forty years. I didn't go to Vietnam. I was in during before. I was in the army before Vietnam ended, but uh, I'm considered a, a Vietnam era veteran. Well, it's funny. I I was I was, well, I, I was mustered out. Combat. I was mustered out of the uh, of the Navy. About the time the Viet well the Vietnam War had already kind of been going on, but then the Gulf of Tonkin incident took place, and I was mustered out with some guys who were there at the time of Gulf. Of they were in the Gulf of Tonkin. That's where I yeah. found out that nothing went on at the Gulf of yeah. Tonkin. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. It he was said, all made up. Well, I I said to this friend of mine, I said, "What's that medal?" He said, "Oh, Gulf of Tonkin." I went, "You were there?" He said, "Yeah." I said. Boy, that must have been something. He says, no. I said, what? He said, they sent us to general quarters. We went to general quarters. The ship fired a couple of rounds uh, uh, out, out into the sea at nothing. And then we came back to shore and we were heroes. You know, it was all a setup. And to, they yeah. finally found out that that was true. You know. And... Um, uh, but I mean, um, so I technically I'm a Vietnam vet. I mean, that's that's the weird part about it, you know. Uh, but uh, what years were you in? I was there from uh, is, is sixty. Uh, what is it? When did I go? There? Yeah, sixty, sixty-three to sixty-five, I think. Oh, okay. I was in 70, 74 to eighty. Yeah. Yeah. But you were were you there during the Vietnam War? I guess. Yeah, the yeah. The, well, the Vietnam War Vietnam started about until not till seventy five. Yeah, well, the Vietnam the War technically 75. had kind of been going on since the Johnson era. Yeah. But on a very limited uh, on a very limited scale. Actually, it began under Kennedy. But under it Kennedy, a, it, you're right. Yeah. But it but it was it was called a, a tr training. <clears throat> they were there to train the Vietnamese. To they take were care of themselves. Yeah, advisors. there was a, there was an, a name for military it. advisors. Military advisors. Yeah, there. Uh, yeah, I think Gulf of Tonkin was under Johnson when Johnson was president. Yeah. No, wait a minute. I'm trying to think. I guess so. When was Johnson president? Now I'd have hmm. to go look it up. Sixty-three to sixty-eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that was a war he just got sucked into, you know. Oh, wait a minute, did it? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm trying to remember. You see, I have trouble now. No, I'm wrong. I wasn't there at that, that time. I got out. I was and went in. Oh, God, when did I go in? These things are so far back now, I can't remember the years. No, I, uh, 63 to 65, I, I think I was working, still working in California. I think I went in in something like 67... 68 no god I, this has really got me no it would have to be you, earlier you volunteered or you yeah i volunteered for the navy because i mm -hmm. wanted to keep from being drafted into the army mm -hmm. and so i joined the uh, navy reserve which was a two-year tour mm -hmm. uh, and then after you were through with that you didn't have to go to meetings or anything but i'm trying yeah. to remember i think no i think i did leave maybe i left in Maybe I left in 65 and went to 67. No, 67, I was already in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to remember. Boy, I, this is, I'm going to have to go back and listen to my life history that I did because I, <laughs> I can't remember the, uh, the years I was there. Um, but I do know. That yeah. covered, is huh? that covered under life in the past? And life? Yeah, I've got to go back and listen <laughs> to it and find out when I was there. I mean, it's really strange. <laughs> That I'm, I'm, this I'm, was before you became a big shot. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm trying to forget. I'm forgetting the chronology of my life. You know, the years that I was there, and I'm trying to remember what years was oh, I there. And so I cool. think I, I'll tell you, cause somebody, if you can look it up, I mean, let me let me look it up. Okay, uh, I'm going to look up. This is going to seem very strange. Okay, but I'm going to look up on IMDb. Um, oh. Uh, uh, let's see here, from Russia with love. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that I was in, uh, that was 1963. <coughs> okay, so I'm right. Yeah, yeah I, would, I was in Hollywood in 1963 because I remember getting an invitation to a screening of From Russia with Love, uh, which okay. you dipped in water to read it. It was like a secret message. <laughs> and I remember it so... I, I I think maybe I maybe I even went in. I was I was in it. I was out by sixty five. I think, yeah, okay, because I know I was in Hollywood in the, the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service when I was, uh, and I do know that when Doctor No came out, I was in Sacramento. I think so. Yeah, that would be. Uh, see, that's the best way for me to figure these things out. I just mm -hmm. think about movies that I saw and knew, and when they came out, and so on. Um. Uh, well, this is uh, it's been nice, nice bunch of people, and uh, it, it's amazing what a small world we live in. When a guy is sitting there from Ger in Germany and looks as <laughs> his camera looks as good as the guy who's in uh, in Texas or the guy who's in California or the uh, guy who's in Connecticut or you know, guy who's in I've been Kentucky. Your podcast for I guess about two years now, and I miss some of the old regulars. What'd you say? I miss some of the old regulars like. Uh, Robert Natali, you know, I always enjoyed it. You know, his, yeah, his, well, he... Old, old, our old regulars, yeah. yeah. I wonder where, uh, and your uh, old paramour, Schmoody, is that what Schmoody, you call yeah. She Schmoody, yeah. Went, she went kind of a uh, little loopy on us, so, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, well I, I wish they would call back, but, you know, I don't think we're ever going to see them back again. But, you know, it's nice Renee, to see we have we some... We haven't heard from Renee in a couple of years. Renee, we don't, I don't know what happened to Renee. You know, that's the girl that's who signed on a week or so ago. Terry, I think, was her name. Huh? Oh, yeah, from, from, from uh, Wisconsin or Montana. Montana. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, listen, uh, it's really nice, uh, you know, um, and uh, I thank you all for calling tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, call us more often, uh, uh, Eddie, when you get a chance. Sure. Uh, and uh, Charlie, of course, you you always call whenever you can, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Jeff no, calls all the time too. Uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, let's see here, what what was the name we gave you here, Hans? Please uh, call us again mm -hmm. if you're up this early <laughs> in Germany. I know it's early. In the I'll morning. try, but it's difficult for me even on Saturday morning yeah. to get out of bed. Uh, yeah, 5 a.m. But I'll give it a shot. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah, it. And of course, the Vernon. You're always there for me, and I really appreciate you calling. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. 
and then I'm going to try, okay, to, uh, I'll probably be out of sync now, right? There we are. Are we out of sync? I guess we are. Anyway, let me get rid of them, and we'll, uh, by getting rid of them, we'll probably be more in sync, okay? Anyway. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, folks. Uh, you know, we got to get more people calling. If it doesn't pick up by the end of next week, I don't know if I'm going to continue doing this. Uh, I've got other things I can do with my life, all right? You know, but this may be the end of the road unless I start getting more uh, commitment from people, more participation, okay? Uh, other than that, I'll see you again, uh, let's see, Monday with the, uh, with the uh, pop-up show, which is always a delight and has a lot of people calling it. And then we'll see you, uh, that's 4 o'clock on Monday, and then we'll see you again uh, on Wednesday night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, if you don't have one, get vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated, wear a goddamn mask, will you? Good night, everybody. Thanks.